Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina and I'm a homesteading, homeschooling mom of three. This is week three of the pantry challenge with Three Rivers Homestead with Jessica. Here I am making um, some meatballs. I've made a video before about a cherry glazed pork meatball. Um, these are going to be beef, but I kind of am using that as the inspiration or like those crock pot meatballs that you do with chili sauce and grape jelly. So I'm mixing up here some ground beef, eggs, Parmesan cheese, and breadcrumbs. I'll roll those up into balls and pan fry them. I did also add some salt and pepper. My favorite tool for doing this is a cookie scoop. And I will leave a link down below with the recipe. Um, I will also leave a link for these cookie scoops because if you have not gotten them before or at ice cream scoops, they have been game changing. It's one of those things that's not that much, but just makes life so much easier. So as you can see, I didn't quite have enough room in the skillet to do all of the meatballs at once. So I do have some in the oven warming, or on warm rather. So once these guys are cooked, I'll put everything together in the oven on warm so I can go ahead and deglaze this pan and get working on a sauce. I have a lot of tomato paste that needs used, so I've grabbed that instead of ketchup, but that would work well for this. And then I also have a currant jelly that did not set up that I thought I would use for this sauce. I'll be adding additional sweeteners with the honey and to deglaze the pan, I'll use the white cooking wine. All right, so that was some of the deglazing process. And I've dumped in this bowl the currant jelly, and then I'm adding an entire can of tomato paste. If I were to make this again, I would only use a half a can of tomato paste. I ended up using a lot more sweetener than I wanted, and I actually looked to see if I had any more currant jelly that I could add to this to just do more sauce because I just added too much. I forgot how tangy the tomato paste is and how flavorful, I mean, it's a concentrated ingredient. So half the can I'm sure would have been good, but I did do the full can and I had to kind of compensate for that with extra honey. But whenever you're doing the pantry challenge, you're getting creative, right? So this is the process and it makes you think a little bit more about the ingredients that you're using. I did add some honey to taste um, to sweeten it up. And I also added some chili powder to give it a little bit of a spice. And if you wanted to, you could add some salt or pepper or garlic powder or onion powder, but I just did, I just did the uh, chili powder. And I'm adding the meat balls to the sauce. And then I just carefully coated the meat balls with the sauce, turned them over before serving. And then they'll just sit here and simmer on low, stirring occasionally so that they don't burn. I've washed some potatoes here and I'm throwing them into boiling water so that we can have some mashed potatoes with our meatballs tonight. Here we have our meatballs, leftover bread, leftover salad, and some mashed potatoes. If you are getting into some baking and you need buttermilk, you can make a buttermilk substitute by doing a tablespoon of, um, you could do lemon juice or you can do vinegar, and then pour your milk on top until it reaches a cup and let it set for about five minutes and it'll help to curdle it a little bit and turn it into something more like buttermilk and that will behave more like buttermilk in your recipe. I needed two cups, so I did two tablespoons. I love a grab and go breakfast. Um, tomorrow we have church, so I thought I'd go ahead and try to make something. Oh, the doggy wants out. So I thought I'd try to make something that we can, um, you know, just grab and go. And I probably won't have any eggs tomorrow morning just because I feel like we leave really early for church and I don't want to have to make all that extra stuff. So we'll probably just have muffins, but I decided since we're trying to clean out the pantry a little bit, we would try some muffins with dates in it. And the recipe calls for two cups of fruit. So this bag says that it has one and a half cups of fruit in it. So I'll do one and a half cups of dates that I'll dice up with a half cup of mini chocolate chips. So we'll try two dozen muffins like that. And then I also have some pumpkin in the, um, in the freezer that I'd like to use up. So I'll make another batch that is a pumpkin muffin so that the kids can choose which one they want. And I imagine that we'll be eating it for snacks and things like that also. And we're gonna go ahead and make it using some of our flour that we're milling here. Um, this is a, I think it's a soft red wheat. I'm pretty sure it's soft red. I have to double, double check, I know it's red but that's what we're using today. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some of our honey that we harvested. Uh, I think it'll be good. I love dates. 
For these muffins, I'm using a recipe from Grains and Grit. I am not that great at using freshly milled grains yet, but I have found a few recipes with Grains and Grit that I've liked, and she also has a YouTube channel that has been helpful as well. So I'll leave a link below um, so that you can follow her recipe. And I also put in my notes below for you that I did substitute instead of her two cups of fruit, I did one and a half cups of dates and a half cup of mini chocolate chips. And honestly, these were a hit. We will make them again. I have a very picky eater in the house and I wasn't sure they would like touch dates with a 10 foot pole, but they did and they enjoyed it. So that's great. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend this recipe with the dates and the mini chocolate chips. The pumpkin muffins that I made did not turn out as well, so I am not going to leave the link below. I don't know what happened to them, but they, I just, I think maybe they were under baked or something. I did not actually measure the amount of pumpkin that I put in there because it was already marked on the bag as two cups, but I wonder if maybe it had more than two cups of pumpkin puree in the bag because I had more muffins than I thought I should and they did not turn out well. So we ate maybe half of them and gave the other half to the chickens. That's disappointing, but then at the same time, it's like, well, I'm glad I have these chickens because I can do something with the muffins without feeling too bad about it. So I'm at Walmart and I see this masa bag of flour on clearance for a dollar. And since I've never used it before, I naturally bought three bags and then stuck it in the freezer for a year or something. So these guys have been stuck in my freezer. I've never tried it and today's the day. Got to get it cleared out, make room in the freezer, decide do I like it or do I not? We eat a lot of tortillas around here. My husband loves to use them to make um, breakfast wraps with some scrambled eggs and salsa and sometimes some sausage or something like that. He'll eat those almost every day. And you know, we like to have burritos and things like that around here as well. So I decided to go ahead and give this a shot. I will be honest with you, I've made flour tortillas in the past, handmade flour, flour tortillas. And without a press, it was really difficult to do. But I saw several sources that were saying, hey, try sticking your um, balls of tortilla dough. In this case, it was the masa tortilla dough. Um, between two sheets of plastic, like a Ziploc bag or maybe parchment paper, and use a pie plate to press it into a thin circle and then fry it up. So what I did was um, I used the Great Value bag. I did try parchment paper. I felt it stuck, so I do not recommend the parchment paper. Definitely the Great Value bags are the way to go, or the Ziploc bags or whatever. Um, I do not think cling wrap would be good because that would be annoying to have to undo. So just cut a bag. It's okay. Use it. Save it and reuse it if you want to, right? So I made several of these and tonight we're having chicken tortillas. So we've got um, some chicken from the freezer. I had some meat in there to use up with some cheese and then I will um, dust everything with some, um, what is it, taco seasoning. And we will have our chicken, I said chicken tortillas, I'm a crazy girl. We're gonna have chicken quesadillas tonight. And with that, I am gonna deep fry some of these tortillas after I've fried them to make some tortilla chips to eat with our corn and black bean salsa from the pantry. Um, I'm excited about that. I do have a video where I show you how to make corn and black bean salsa, and I'll leave that link below and probably a card up top here for you as well. After frying the tortilla shells on the griddle, I cut them up into pieces and put them in a deep fryer that was already preheated to 350 degrees. I let them fry for about eight minutes and then moved them to a plate and sprinkled salt on top and stuck it in the oven to stay warm. This is some rooster meat we're using today, which is really nice for something like quesadillas because I can just chop it up into tiny pieces and no one knows how stringy it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take several chunks of this rooster meat of the chicken and place it into my pan here where I'm gonna mix it with the taco seasoning and just get it nice and warm before trying to make the chicken quesadillas with it. 
And of course, I'm gonna add some taco seasoning to my cheese too before I put it on the quesadillas. And I just kind of used the cheese that I had in the fridge. There was cheddar and mozzarella. You know, it's a pantry clean-out challenge. You just use what you have and you don't worry about it. You get creative and sometimes you find, oh, I really liked it this way or I didn't like this like it this way and next time I'm gonna do it differently and that's fine. Don't these chips look good? Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Very crunchy too. And um, we did serve it with a Southwest chopped salad that I had. And then, like I said, the corn and black bean salsa. It was cold enough to ice skate and we still have kale. How cool is that? Love it. We're gonna need it because we are making some venison burgers. All right, so we are on week three of our pantry challenge and I like the pantry challenge because it challenges me to try new recipes and to um, use things that I've never used before um, and also just helps me to clean things out, which is always good because I have a tendency to get some things because I have ideas for this and that and then I never really do that recipe and I've got some extra stuff around. But in this case today, I have a new tool that I want to use. We have um, more venison in our freezer than we have ground beef right now. So I recently got, actually, I got it from a husband for Christmas. It's a meat grinder because I thought he might like to make some sausages and things. It's something that he's talked about before, but he hasn't used it yet. But I thought I would go ahead and grind up some venison and do half venison, half hamburger meat or ground beef to make some hamburgers tonight. So that's one thing that I'm going to do. And I am going to go ahead. It's a KitchenAid, at KitchenAid attachment, so I'll put it on here. But before I grind up that meat and get... Um, you know, that dirty meat in there, I'm going to go ahead and make our hamburger buns first. Say I'm just going to use all-purpose flour. I do have some all-purpose flour and I just haven't had time to mill any today and I don't feel like waiting. Um, it just takes a while to do it. It's also most beneficial for the freshly milled grains. You get more um, nutritional benefits if you use it within 24 hours of milling it. So I'm reluctant to mill it ahead of time and store it in the freezer. I do do that sometimes. Do do. I do that sometimes, but um, I prefer not to just because I know that it kind of takes away from what I'm trying to do when I do that. So we're just going to do the all-purpose flour today to save some time. Um, so I've got my two tablespoons of yeast. I need one cup and two tablespoons of warm water. Quarter cup of sugar, a third cup of oil, and let it stand for five minutes. So the recipe calls for an egg yolk to brush the tops of the buns with and um, one large egg for the batter so or for the dough. So what I've decided to do, because I'm wild, is I, t I have some smaller eggs and I have some larger eggs from our chickens. So I took um, from a smaller egg the egg yolk and then I put the egg white separately and I'm just gonna add a whole nother egg to that. I'm gonna kinda think, mm, maybe that'll make this like a large egg and I still get my egg yolk to brush on top of the buns and I don't feel like I wasted an egg white and I don't have to keep up with an egg white in my refrigerator or something like that. I just don't need all that. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk these up a little bit. So this is to go in the dough and I'll have to remember to keep the other ones separate. I don't know about you but I might just like dump that in the other one. Sometimes you get too many irons in the fire and you make crazy mistakes, you know? All right, so that will go in here once my yeast is done. Put in our egg. Teaspoon of salt. And now the flour, the tricky bit. It calls for three to three and a half cups. Switch out for the dough hook. All right, so we're just gonna let it knead for three to five minutes. 
Do you ever go looking for your measuring cup and then remember that it was in a bag? I do that. Now we're going to go ahead and divide this into eight balls for eight buns. Cover it up. Let it set for 10 minutes, I think. You could get a kitchen scale and be super accurate, but as you can tell, today I'm like a five-year-old in the kitchen, okay? I'm just like getting her done. Happy to, happy to get to play a little bit, but not taking things too seriously. There's just so much to do. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna enjoy it. It is fun playing with dough. It feels good, it smells good. There is, I mean, just, doesn't it look pretty? Just, it's a nice dough. Enjoy it. Don't take it too seriously. We know it's gonna be good. You know what, Okay. And this is the egg yolk. Oops. Egg yolk and water. To brush on the buns. And then we'll do a couple tablespoons of sesame seeds just to sprinkle on top. Should be good. Wife of the year here. Bought this for my husband um, from Amazon. It says it is a stand mixer attachment with grinding plates, grinding blades, sausage stuffing tubes, and sausage, sausage stuffing plate, cleaning brush, and food pusher. Grind meat, vegetables, cheese, and more, and make two sizes of sausages. So, I mean, it shows right here, right? I'm gonna grind some meat for things, so we're gonna go ahead and grind some venison, and I'm gonna try to mix that up 50-50 with hamburger for hamburgers this evening. So I bought it for my husband and then here I am using it first. I feel badly about that, but I don't think he'll care. All right, got this little brush here. Little tray. Cool. That was easy. I've never used it. I've never used an attachment with my KitchenAid before. This is all new to me. Cut meat into long, narrow strips or cubes. Turn mixer to speed four or five and to feed into hopper using the food pusher. For better mix and more tender results, grind beef twice. Best texture results from grinding very cold or partially frozen meat. Frozen fatty meat should only be ground once. My meat is not cold. Nice. Before we do that, we will go ahead and brush the egg yolk on our buns and do the sesame seeds. I feel like everything's rushed trying to fit stuff in and I'm not being smart today. I forgot to grease my pan. Some days are like that. My bread's probably like, leave me alone. Stop touching me. You're deflating me. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. It always looks so pretty when you brush it. You don't have to brush it, but it just makes it look better when it comes out. Everybody's like, ooh, aren't those buns fancy with your nice brown tops and your sesame seeds? And I'm like, Psh, I know, there's something special. Let's see. As far as ingredients go, I mean, you feel kind of good about it. I did just use oil from a can, canola oil. I know some people are not loving canola oil. I get it. The budget likes canola oil. <clears throat> There's things in there we don't need, right? There we go. Okay. There we go. 
Now they're sliding around. They shouldn't stick. They're sliding all over. All right, eight to 12 minutes. Come closer. All right, let's do this. So my husband was like, what are you gonna grind? When I asked this morning if he would mind if I used his grinder, um, I said venison, and he gave me a look, and I'm like, don't worry, it's not the tenderloin. We have meat marked in there for to be ground. And he's like, oh, okay, good. I said, but if there isn't enough grinder meat, would you mind if I did the hams? And he said, no, the hams are fine. So we're starting with our grinder meat. If we like it in the future, I may grind up some of the hams also. I don't know if I'm overstuffing that, considering I've never done this before. I should probably take it easy, huh? That did just what I thought it was gonna do, and I am pleased as punch, as they say. I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, I know I wanna mix this with the hamburger, and it recommends grinding it twice. And I know I want my hamburger seasoned with the Montreal steak seasoning. So I'm going to go ahead and season this and add in the, it's about two pounds of venison. So I'm going to add in about two pounds of beef and run that all through the grinder together. I'll, I'll mix it up a little bit, you know, get it ready, but run it through the grinder again. So maybe it'll be better blended and then it will still grind up that venison a little better. I think it's going to be good. I'm excited. There's my beef. All right. I've got some grilled meat steak seasoning. I'm gonna add what I think to be about three tablespoons. Honestly, this is, this feels really good. I don't know that it's even necessary to run it through again. It feels really good. I'm not gonna run it through. It's okay. I don't know if you heard, but if you put a little dimple in the middle, a little thumbprint, See very well. Put a little thumbprint in the middle. It helps to keep your patty from puffing up too much and stays rounder and flatter. These buns are beautiful. They taste delicious and they have less strange ingredients from the than the store bought counterparts. They are also more filling, I believe. While I had the venison out, I went ahead and grabbed some to make some deer jerky. All right, we need three quarters cup of Worcestershire sauce. Let's see, Worcestershire sauce. But if you corrected me, I'd probably go, oh, okay, because don't know. My son's over on the other side of the camera here doing his math, and he's into the idea of having some deer jerky. We are all fans. Three quarter cup of soy sauce, and now the only reason why I buy lemon pepper is to put in this recipe. We need four tablespoons of lemon pepper. It says a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper, but I'm not doing that today, or the red pepper, because I think it just makes it too spicy for my kids. Two cloves of garlic. Spoonfuls. It's probably more than necessary. Um, it calls for a pinch of ginger root. I don't have that. A quarter teaspoon of Tabasco sauce. Yeah. We're, a, we're a Frank's hot sauce kind of family. Mm -mm. do a couple dashes of that and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper mm -hmm. All right. and you just stir it up and wait for a day and then stick it on the dehydrator for another day okay we have eight beautiful buns and I have eight hamburgers for tonight and seven more that I am putting in the freezer because I know that we are gonna want hamburgers again and these are already made up so these will probably be on the menu next week For tonight's dinner, we have leftover beet pickled eggs, some sunflower bacon crunch salad, and these big, beautiful burgers. We're out of muffins and getting tired of eggs. True story. All right, for dinner, we are gonna have some carrot fries. If you've never tried them, hang in there for the recipe. We're gonna serve those with some homemade turkey, turkey salad sandwiches watermelon, and more beet pickled eggs. 
We had cleaned the bedrooms. We put a bunch of stuff away, vacuumed. It feels a lot better in there now in those rooms. And I'm ready to get on dinner. And I'm thankful that we had some turkey in the freezer. I've had it set out for a day or so in the fridge, just to kind of thaw. But I think I'm gonna have to probably let it thaw a little bit more. But sometimes it's easier to cut when it's a little frozen. So I'm gonna go ahead and it's already shredded some, but I'm gonna go ahead and chop it up some more and put it in here with some mayo. I'm thinking maybe some craisins and celery for some crunch and then do some seasoning of salt, pepper, and I don't know what, we'll see what we get into. I've not been as much of a planner lately as I sometimes am and it's been okay. It's been okay. I like, I like to know a little bit more what's going on, but at the same time, we've had a lot of leftovers to eat because I've tended to throw in more vegetables that I'm trying to use up from the freezer or a pantry. So we've had more leftovers than typical. So it's okay. All right, here I'm just chatting away. But um, I just want to let you know, I've got the turkey from our freezer that I'm going to go ahead and chop up to put into our bowl here. So tonight we're home. We're having an easy dinner. I kind of thought I would make this yesterday, actually, but when I looked in the refrigerator, we really had a lot of leftovers. On Sundays, we typically go to um, Little Caesars. We, our church is pretty far from our house, so it's kind of hard to wait for lunch until we get home, especially if we're gonna go do a grocery pickup from Walmart, which we often do. So it's hard to wait, and you really can't beat I mean, maybe you can, okay? I'm not gonna say you can't beat it, but it's a really great value, the Little Caesars pizza. So we usually get a couple pizzas and I just don't even feel guilty about it. It's a nice, helps me to relax on a Sunday, actually have a bit of a Sabbath. Sometimes I'm in the mood to cook on Sundays and I just, I would, I think that's a pleasant thing and I find joy in it and I want to serve the family and then other times on Sunday I just really feel the need to rest and recharge and I just say hey if that's what's going to recharge me today having a lazy dinner or an easy dinner then that's what I'm going to do so sometimes I make a nice dinner on Sundays because it brings me joy and serve my family and other times on Sunday I think it would be best to relax but I digress so yesterday when I looked in the refrigerator we um, were gonna go to a basketball game and I realized that I thought I really had enough food to just have leftovers so it was pretty hodgepodgey you know I had a couple kids with chicken nuggets I had two of us had, no, three of us had pizza. Okay, three of us had chicken nuggets and three of us had pizza. That's the way it went because I do have some chicken nuggets in the freezer. And then we had just fruit or vegetables for our side, carrot sticks or apples or bananas or oranges, whatever each child preferred. I tried to pack them their preference and for my husband and myself. And then everybody had something that had, you know, some bread to it. So mine was, actually I don't think I, I just had the pizza, but some, some people had um, goldfish crackers or what else did we have? I had a couple leftover pancakes and I have some kids who just like to grab a pancake and bite into it like a snack. So I packed them some pancakes, but we just made it work with what we had and it was good and fine. And now that stuff's not wasted and we'll have this turkey salad for dinner. I've got some kale in there that I had picked the other day to go on our burgers that we can put on, on the turkey salad sandwiches also. And I have some tomatoes that I have sliced from our burgers the other day. I will look to see, I know we're kind of low on it though. So I'll look to see if I have more tomatoes in there. I do have some green onion. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what tomorrow holds. Like I said, I've not been a very good planner, but I was thinking about doing a Mongolian beef recipe that my sister-in-law sent me. Um, I've got some different Asian sauces. I think I have what I need to pull it off, but I think a lot of us would enjoy that. And it's a nice change up. You know, we have burgers and pizza and chicken nuggets and turkey salad. I feel like something with a different flavor palette. 
um, different cuisine sounds good to me. So here we go. I'm thinking I might just make it all because this is the kind of thing that is good for lunch the next day too, right? Maybe I won't use all the turkey. Maybe I'll save a little bit. I made a chicken pot pie um, a few weeks ago, but it wasn't really the chicken pot pie. It was like the kind that you put in the um, casserole dish with the biscuits on top. So it was just peas and carrots and um, like a creamy base and chicken. And then I put biscuits on top. One of the kiddos was not a fan. So much so that if you mention making chicken pot pie, it is like, no, please no. It's um, a little bit disappointing because I think a lot of other people really like it. But I was, that's why I'm not going this route with the turkey. I'm thinking a sandwich will be good. And all the, everybody here seems to like sandwiches pretty well. All right, that'll be good. Now we'll add some mayo. Looks like this is running low. We're a Duke's family. How about you? We like Duke's. Um, I do make homemade mayonnaise if I run out, but I don't usually just make it. <clears throat> but if you're doing the pantry challenge, and you're out of mayonnaise, you can make it. It's not too bad. It just use that immersion blender that I showed you earlier. Love that sucker. And you whip up some egg, an egg and oil of your choice. I usually just use like the cheap seed oils that are not um, super good for you. But mix, up, mix that in there. All right, I am going to need some more mayonnaise. I'll be back. Got more? So I do have some green onion in my refrigerator that needs used up, but my husband doesn't really care for green onion. I think it would be really good in this. Well, he doesn't mind green onion. Excuse me. He doesn't like raw onion. And I like raw onion, especially in something like this, but I'm not gonna do that today. Um, I do think, however, I'll make it a point to try to use it tomorrow in whatever recipe. I'm really leaning towards that Mongolian beef, beef but I just haven't checked the ingredients yet. Some seasons I am just on top of the planning, and other seasons I just roll with it. And I guess either way is okay, as long as it's not stressing me out, right? If I'm comfortable, who cares? If everybody else in the house is comfortable, it doesn't really matter, right? All right, that's probably okay. I may add some more, but I am gonna go ahead and take a moment to add some um, celery and raisins. These stalks of celery are on the small side, so I am doing four stalks of celery in here, but if you were using larger outer pieces, maybe just three. But I don't want anybody to miss the crunch. I think the crunch is necessary in something like this. I just think it really makes it good. If I didn't have celery, I might go with apple, but my family's more likely to eat apples as a snack as opposed to celery. So we'll add the celery to this and save the apples for snacking. Yeah, I feel like I could get, go, get away. I feel like I could get away with a little bit more celery in there. I don't know. We'll see. Go get some craisins. Yeah, mayonnaise on the fingers. Doing it. I like the sweet punch that craisins give a salad. I like mason jars because they've got your marks on there so you can tell about how much you're doing. So there's already about two cups in here. I'm gonna aim for putting in about a cup, maybe less of craisins. Yeah, we did a cup. What would be really good in this? Pecans, I've got pecans in there. That might be good. I do already have all this celery though for the crunch. And I've got a couple people who aren't super fond of nuts. So I'll admit the nuts this time for their sake. But if that's something that you guys would like, do it. All right, I'm gonna get a spoon and add some more mayo.
I bought this monster bag of carrots and I have not touched them. So I have got to do something with them. So tonight we're gonna have carrot fries. I'm gonna scoot you back. Is that better? Is that more comfortable? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carrots. It's one of those things that I feel like once I cut it up, oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Monster. One of those things that once I cut it up, I feel like it'll be not very much on the pan. I'll put my scraps in here. I talked to my sister recently about those chopped salads because I've been buying a lot of those lately and she really likes those too. She said they make for really easy lunches for her. So, um, the other day, she sent me a picture of what was in her grocery cart. cart. Um, she was joking. She's like, a nice blend of good for you and terrible for you. <laughs> but um, anyway, she uh, had in there, it was one of those chopped like salads, but it was an Asian themed. And I remembered when we did every plate a while ago, um, those meal kits, our church, we won them at our church in a giveaway they were doing so that was really fun I like in trying new food so that was a good time but anyway they would send you the meal kits and the recipes and there was an Asian salad in there and I'm pretty sure it was carrots and cucumbers and I have carrots and cucumbers so I'm thinking tomorrow I will go ahead and make an Asian salad um, using that and probably sesame oil I don't know we'll see what else we have that'll make it good but that's probably gonna be with that Mongolian beef tomorrow. But right now I'm just trying to keep an eye on what I have and use it wisely before, it, before stuff goes bad. The other day, actually today, I had to take to the chickens like some, a couple mushrooms that had gone bad and a couple strawberries and I don't know, like a small bowl of soup of the chicken chili white chicken chili we made the other day that hadn't got eat, gotten eaten. And you know, I just hate wasting food. It's, I mean, my chickens get it, so that's nice. At least I have that. It does make you feel better when you get rid of food if you're giving it to a chicken. And I'm contemplating perhaps not even going to the grocery store on Sunday to get our fresh fruits and vegetables. Just really working with what we have more because I do have some canned fruit and vegetables. Well, I've got a good bit of canned vegetables actually, but we do have some canned fruit also that is really not getting used. So I think since we have been eating so many oops, fresh fruits and vegetables the past couple weeks, you know, I feel like a week of focusing more on just using up the fresh that we have and then pivoting towards the cans might be a good thing. Although we have a birthday in the house coming up, so the birthday boy will get what he'd like for dinner. So I may have to make a special trip for that, but you won't mind, right? Special occasion. You know, I, you know, we talk about the different love languages, acts of service, quality time, all these things, but I swear that, you know, food has got to be a love language for some people. Don't you think? I mean, they say, you've heard the phrase, the best way um, to get to a man is through their stomach or something like that. And that's probably partially true. <laughs> Feed them well. But um, I do think that some people just, enjoy food so much and it can be such a comforting thing also it's important to take that into consideration when you're doing something like a pantry challenge because some people feel very deeply about these things now i do think it's healthy to branch out and try new things that's good for you um but it's okay to try something and not like it all right, I'm gonna finish um, peeling these and chopping them up and I'll put drizzle them with some oil and put some salt on there and we'll get them in the oven and roasting here soon. Thinking again about the fresh fruit 
and vegetable thing. I do like to get fresh fruits and vegetables, not only for the health of my children, but I do feel like it gives them some sense of control um, as to what they get to have say in in the house also. Like it's a small thing that we can do to help people to be comfortable and heard and just feel loved and seen and all those things. So for me, whenever I go shopping, I always ask the kids, what is something, what is a fruit or vegetable that you would like to have this week? And I'll go ahead and get it. So one of the things that I got this week was actually funny. It's a silly thing. Um, my husband, just being silly, said dragon fruit. Well, sometimes I don't like to buy dragon fruit because it's so expensive, but just because we had it in the budget and it's fun. I went ahead and got dragon fruit. I don't think he really cares about dragon fruit. I got a fun carrot here. You don't often get those at the supermarket. That looks like a homegrown carrot. All right, time for some oil and salt. We'll mix that up and we will roast these in the oven. The other day I started to make venison jerky. Had it marinating in the refrigerator. It smells wonderful, but I completely forgot about it. So it should be super flavorful. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the dehydrator. My husband, interestingly, is a fourth grade teacher and he, I don't know what he's reading. He likes to read um, historical fiction type books though. And he recently made butter with his class and now I think he wants to do a little jerky. So he asked me to go ahead and save some pieces for him to dehydrate with his class also. So I'm gonna put most of them on the dehydrator, throw the rest in the refrigerator for him to take to school with him tomorrow. Good morning, today I am making French toast casserole. We have just bits of leftover bread from the freezer. I do have a couple leftover hamburger buns too. I'm not sure how those are gonna be in there. They've got sesame seeds on it, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um, but I'm gonna warm these up in the microwave a little bit so they'll be able to soak up our egg. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, four eggs, one cup of milk, and some cinnamon and vanilla, and put them in this dish. Oven's ready. <laughs> and then put them in this dish.
Rosalie wanted to put some syrup on it before we put it in the oven, so we did, all right? It's the little things that make us happy sometimes. So there it is coming out. Doesn't it look so good? It was good, trust me. I'm making bread again because we just used ours up when we still have some turkey salad left. And I decided to go ahead and make a garlic and herb and mozzarella bread this time. So I just used the basic white bread recipe that came with the bread machine. And then there's a setting that has mix-ins. And at that point, I put in about a half a cup of mozzarella cheese and I don't know, a few tablespoons of this salt-free garlic and herb seasoning. It's really tasty and I'm gonna be sad when it's out, but it's lasted us a long time. So I have decided for dinner tonight, I thought maybe we would do um, that Asian beef, what was it, Mongolian beef maybe tonight, but I changed my plan. I'm looking at all this broccoli that we have, and I decided that I'd really prefer just to use that up. So we're gonna have beef and broccoli tonight, and my daughter said, Mom, please no rice, we've had so much rice. And I'm like, okay, fine. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and use some of the spaghetti noodles and Asian condiments and maybe some carrots and onions and things and go ahead and try to make a lo mein. So I'm on Google right now looking for some good recipes and I will post those in the description below for you, but I'm excited. I think it's gonna be good. I feel like this dinner was meant to be. I have everything I need to make the lo mein. We've got carrots, celery, green onions, spaghetti noodles, um, an onion, ground ginger, two bottles of soy sauce, both regular sodium, if you will, and both almost empty that were in my refrigerator. Won't it be so nice to use that up and get that out of there? I also need like two tablespoons, four tablespoons of teriyaki sauce. Look at that. I will use that up today. I am just so happy. Um, and then we've got our honey and I don't know, did I say vegetable oil? I've got some vegetable oil. Okay, got my veggies ready to go. Adding some oil. Um, it would help to turn that on, wouldn't it? While the veggies are cooking, go ahead and make a sauce using those ingredients. Again, the recipe is down below, but it's those condiments and things that I had showed you earlier. And you toss the veggies in that, and then you'll take the veggies and pop them over into the pot with the noodles and mix that all up. Then I'll just rinse out the skillet and use it for the beef and broccoli. Now I've got the veggies tossed into the noodles and I've got my wok back again. I'm gonna put some oil in there and get to this beef and broccoli going. So we start with the broccoli and add in some garlic, some ginger, and when things have softened up a bit, you're gonna add that um, to just some sort of separate container. I've got a warming burner on my stove, so I put it in this little container and I'm just keeping it on warm. Before adding beef to the wok, I'm going to season it with salt and pepper, and then add it to the wok with the hot oil. While the beef is browning, Awen's gonna cut up this dragon fruit for us. It's not much, we just have one to split between the six of us, but it is better than none, and it's just a fun little thing to do. And now we sauce the beef. And stir in our broccoli and garlic. We're excited for some beef and broccoli, some dragon fruit, and some lo Get yourselves a husband that makes the family kettle corn. I mean, how cool is that? He's the best. Um, in order to make kettle corn, we are using, what is this, coconut oil. I think he said he added more than what he needed, but it's okay. To make kettle corn, you use equal parts popcorn and sugar. So here we are using one cup of popcorn and one cup of sugar. To test if it's ready, you will add three popcorn kernels to the oil, and once those have popped, you know it's time to add the rest of the popping corn. I grabbed the vanilla for him um, because I knew that, that he would need that too, 
And unfortunately, I think I flustered him. and He felt like he needed to put it in right now. And, you know, we just kind of have those crazy days. But he put the vanilla in too early. You would want to put it in. You want to put it in after you've added the popcorn and the sugar. It ended up just splattering all in the oil and being kind of difficult to work with. But it was still good in the end. But just don't do that, okay? Once the three popcorn kernels have popped, you go ahead and add the rest of the popcorn. And once that popcorn starts going, you go ahead and dump in the sugar. And the kettle corn maker has this little wheel on it that you spin with a paddle inside. So that kind of keeps everything turning to help prevent it from burning. So that is a really cool thing. And my husband actually received this as a gift from another teacher that he works with, which is pretty darn cool. And it makes for a fun, tasty, and inexpensive treat. I'm sorry we don't have smell-o-vision because you just have to trust me when I tell you that this smells as good as it looks. Uh, and nobody complained about having that kettle corn. It was delicious. Lots of salt. He's saying, don't forget to add lots of salt. Tastes really good with a good bit of salt on there. Do you approve? More cowbell? Boss, baby! It's pretty good. No wonder I'm tired. That was a lot of stuff, but man, I'm really cleaning out stuff. So thank you for joining me for this pantry challenge. Stay tuned because believe it or not, I've still got like a whole nother week's worth of things to get on here for you. If that's something you want, subscribe please. And maybe even you can click on it here. I don't know.